So in today's episode of the three-wheeled electric mini bike build, we get the frame stripped and stretched, ready for these large racing slicks. Now it's quite a long video because there was a fair bit to do, so make sure you guys sit back and enjoy, and let's get to it. So we've got all the unnecessary mounts taken off the front there. Now this wheel just won't fit, so we're gonna to have to try and jack the frame out a little bit, probably 10 or 15 mil, and that should clear inside. I've been looking at this thing for a little over an hour now. I've sort of been going yay like that. That does look cool. Looks like a little mini stunt bike, but I do love being different like that. You know, trying to think of, you know, do we move the wheel back a bit, keep it single, or do we do the double? I don't know. I'm thinking, let's just do the double. It's just really hard to say no to that view. So we finally got the steel. It's actually been a couple of weeks now because they couldn't get this in stock, so I've had to order it in. So I ended up trying this uh, Bunnings steel I got, and it was a 1.2mm wall, just way too thin. It was going to kind of work, but it sort of uh, kinked a little bit. I did try and pack sand in there to help it, but anyway, that's all in the past now. Now I've got the right steel. I'll cut a bit off, and we'll get it bent up, and I'll show you guys what I've got planned for the back. Righto, you might notice there's been a little bit of work done. So first of all, yes, we're going EV with this build. I've decided to do that as something different and we're gonna power it by Ryobi drill batteries. As some of you guys may have seen on the uh, YouTube shorts I've been uploading, I've already done that and it's probably no surprise to you, but to you other guys, that's what we're building. Now, back frame, I smashed this out, got it done because I wanted to see what it's gonna look like and when I show you guys the other side. So my only concern about this build, and it's been brought up by a few people, is we've got a lot of rubber contact in the rear that wants to always go straight. And that poor old wheel up the front that wants to turn, I don't know what's gonna happen. So basically I'm gonna get throw some another rail at the other side. We'll get some bearings, mount those wheels up, and we're gonna push this thing around and see how it goes. This will be a complete fail. But it seems to steer all right. Seems to change course a little bit. Oh, this really isn't a good test. Just admire how good this thing actually looks. Got the back wheels just mocked up with a couple of little spaces. It doesn't ride properly. The back wheels just move as you turn it. So we're not gonna go, for, we're not gonna know for sure if this thing actually turns well until we've actually got it rolling properly but we may just have to change that out for a knobby tire or something in the future so 
So it's been about another good week on this build. I had all intentions of getting things done on it uh, during the week, but just life gets in the way and everything. So that's why these videos are taking so long and we're kind of doing a caravan build as well. Um, I might put some shorts up or something in the future of that, but got that going on too. And we've got a kind of a deadline on it. So things like this just aren't really taking priority, unfortunately. Anyway, so we picked up some bearings for the rear axle. I'm gonna go ahead and just do the both rear axles and we're gonna see how we go. We'll make up some hubs. So let's just get right into it. That way we can double nut it too, top one up on the back and that shouldn't come loose. Oh yeah, we got that to fit good. Nice and tight. Got the hub mounted up. This rim's actually probably the roughest rim out of them all, sort of. I think it's been drilled out a few times. Anyway, that all lined up pretty well. Slide our axle down, sort of like so. Nice and tight. Get it into position, tack it, and then we can pull this whole thing out. Fully weld it. These plates made up, let's get the bearings mounted. Okay, so decided to take the wheels off and sit down on the bench. Now this original frame is actually quite bent and when we've added onto it, it's kind of thrown out a little bit. So I've made it as best as we can and it is super difficult being that this thing just tapers off. So we're trying to make everything look, you know, sort of uniform how it's meant to be. I've got it height-wise set up, it's perfect there. As you can see, they sort of both level out. So as, as long as those are gonna run true to each other and true to the bike, we should be okay. The flange placement, if they are sort of tilted a little bit, I can't do too much about that because yeah, the frame is sort of tilting off on an angle anyway. Looking at it now, if I was to do it again, you'd probably bend just before you, the join is, you'd probably bend here and sort of straighten the frame up all the way down. It'd kind of look a bit funny though because it'd run and then curve back. But anyway, so we got both wheels back on, tacked on. Now, next issue, rear wheel is contacting the table, but the front's not. So I did think about this, we're going to have to rake the front out a little bit, which it does need anyway, because it's sort of sitting up too much. So this thing turned out absolute killer. Raking that front end has helped this bike a lot. It's brought that front wheel down also, so it's all nice and level, the chassis is level now. And man, does, has it changed the overall look of this thing. As you guys know, we don't usually build bikes, but this is something definitely different and I've never seen anything like it. What do you guys think? Do we need to extend the seat and make it bigger or move it back or something over the wheels? Now it's getting quite late, so let's get this thing off the table and I wanna see if it's gonna roll around easy. So we've got no need for a stand as well. So you're definitely gonna lean into this thing to turn it, but it does turn all right, it's actually not too bad. You can feel the back wheel trying to lift up off the ground a little bit, but I think once the motor's on there, it might sort of help it push forward. We did actually break the tack off the rear wheel as well, so I'll have to tack that back up, but um, it actually feels quite good, so I think we'll go ahead with this thing. Now just look at this thing outside, how good does it look? 
So we still got to finish off that front wedge on the handlebars there. I just wanted to get this thing out on the ground and just see what it's going to look like. I love the ride height over all of this thing. It's nice and close to the ground, which is good. We still got to play around with those rear wheels a little bit. They are a little bit too close. I'm going to pump them up and just sort of see if they're going to rub together. But um, we have to play with those and where our chain's actually going to run. Because I'm thinking about just running a single chain to both rear wheels and having a tensioner in the centre of the chains. And we're going to finish up the head stem, like I said before. So we've got a little bit of work to go, but in the next one, we'll have this thing with the electric motor in it and we'll have it going. So builds like these are quite expensive to uh, keep working on. Those rear bearings alone are about $150. So if you guys would like to help support the channel, you can jump over and grab your very own t-shirt, hoodies, we've got sweatshirts, we've got polo shirts, we've got beanies and hats coming soon. So keep an eye out for those. And make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell because about 90% of you guys haven't. And I'll just have to catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.